Welcome back to Stompbox Breakdown. Got a real interesting one today, the DoD FX67 Stereo Turbo Chorus. And I'm actually gonna record this one in stereo. So if you can, throw on a set of headphones to get the full experience. You know that I like my chorus pedals, but even I try to limit myself to just one chorus pedal on my board at a time. DoD does not concern themselves with such limitations, and in 1988 released the Stereo Turbo Chorus Pedal. And stereo? Yeah, it's a stereo pedal, but turbo? It doesn't oscillate faster than most other chorus pedals. The instructions say it goes from 0.8 to 8 hertz, and that's pretty typical for a chorus effect. So I think that someone in branding just put turbo on there because turbo was a fun new adjective that everyone was using in the late 80s, early 90s. Now, when I first looked at this pedal, I thought two chorus circuits in one pedal. Interesting, but What's the big deal? They're not exactly splitting the atom here. Why are people spending $175 on this old DoD chorus pedal? Then I took a look at the instruction manual, which says, these chorus circuits are varied by a unique chorus modulation scheme, and that the right and left chorus effects are derived from separate chorus circuits and do not cancel each other out if summed together. Let's explore that last claim a little bit. Your typical stereo chorus pedal, like this Maxon CS505, has a regular output and an inverse output. See, it's even, it's even labeled right there. Meaning that the signal comes in, it goes through the delay, which is controlled by this oscillator, and the output of that gets split and one side gets inverted, and then both delayed signals get mixed in with the original signal. So you have two different signals coming out here. And it does sound nice going through a stereo rig, but this output is really just this output with a goatee on. And if you take both tracks and sum them together into a mono signal, the fact that it's just a flipped version shows because those inverted chorus effects cancel each other out. So here's the left channel of the CS505. And here's the right channel of the CS505. See, sounds like a normal chorus effect, but what happens when I combine these two together into a mono track? Weird, right? The effect just kind of disappears and it even sounds thinner. And this actually kind of really matters because you can't count on every venue to handle a stereo signal and you never know how people are gonna be listening to your recordings. And we can even see this if I bring up two tuners in Logic and use a pure sine wave, we can see the two tuners are doing pretty much the exact same thing. Now on the stereo turbo chorus, on a very simple setting, they're clearly headed in different directions. But what I think is really interesting is when we mix in the second chorus effect, they start to take on a much more complex pattern. That unique chorus modulation scheme I mentioned earlier is this section labeled on the schematic as the complex LFO swirl generator. And in addition to sounding like an amazing Ben & Jerry's flavor, it's really unique because it's not just linking one set of controls to one oscillator and the other set of controls to the other oscillator. And it's not just taking the inverse of one oscillator and sending that to the second delay. It's tapping into the controls up here and feeding a function of those settings and a function of the difference between those settings into these two amplifiers down here. 
It also is employing this complex feedback network to keep it all intermixed, but not the same. That's why they can say this unique chorusing effect is unduplicatable, even with the use of two separate chorus units. So we get these two completely unique voices coming out of these two delay circuits, mixed in with the original signal down here, and we're set up for a swirly sea of modulation. All right, knowing all that, let's get back to the guitar. Here's the dry signal. Chorus left. Chorus right. Here's the left and the right summed together in mono. See, you can still hear it. And now is a treat for anyone actually listening in stereo. So the pedal itself, is it a good chorus? Oh yeah. One of the things that people hate about a typical chorus effect is when you can hear that sweep a little too clearly and it becomes distracting. Having a second oscillator in the mix helps add a little bit of extra turbulence, or what DoD calls an ebullient chorusing effect not available from a single chorus effect. Ebullient? Ebullient? I mean, yeah, it's a perfectly cromulent word, but five years from now, you're going to put out a distortion pedal with a butt knob. So maybe slow your roll a little bit, DoD. I'd like to think that the recent climb in the resale price of this pedal is because it's so unique, and that it's got two fully analog bucket brigade chorus circuits, which is something you just don't see too often. It's an engineering perhaps an over-engineering feat that took quite a bit of smarts to pull off in an analog circuit. Or maybe it's just that 80s, 90s nostalgia kicking in. Either way, now that I know what's actually going on in here, it makes me like chorus pedals even more. Hey, thanks for sticking around. This was a really interesting pedal to explore, and I'll catch you on the next ebullient episode of Stompbox Turbo Breakdown.